Over 16 years, a vicious killer took the lives of at least six women. Horrifyingly, he was apprehended and charged with murder in 1977, but due to procedural errors in the investigation, he was able to avoid a life sentence and got out of prison in only 15 years to kill again. At the very least, four lives could have been saved had law enforcement dotted their I's and crossed their T's. Joseph Miller, the Second Chance Strangler Joseph Miller was born Joseph Tarzan on January 15, 1945, and was almost immediately abandoned at an orphanage. He was adopted by a family in Chicago and took their surname, Miller. His new family was strict and he was regularly beaten. Robert responded by acting out, and he was arrested repeatedly but always managed to get a slap on the wrist despite committing crimes such as carjacking, theft, and even assault. After leaving his adoptive parents' house, Miller moved around trying to find his place in the world, eventually settling in Skokie, Illinois. He was married and worked as a pizza delivery driver, but in 1977, he was unable to contain his murderous impulses. 31-year-old Martha Ryan was reported missing on October 25th. She was last seen in Chicago with a man driving a Chevy Vega. Her body was found just over a week later. She had been strangled and wrapped in a blanket before she was dumped in some bushes in Skokie, near Miller's home. When police saw that Miller's vehicle matched the description of the car the killer was driving, he was brought in for questioning. While he was being investigated, another body was found, that of 22-year-old prostitute Ann Maxim. There was a break in the case when a woman came forward who had known Maxim, and she told police that both Miller and his wife were regular customers. On November 5th, 1977, Joseph Miller was charged with two counts of murder. When police searched his car, they found evidence connecting him to an armed robbery, a kidnapping, and an aggravated battery. He was also suspected of several other murders from the prior year. However, during the trial, it was discovered that there were procedural errors regarding the searches of Miller's car and property. As a result, much of the evidence against him was suppressed by the court. As part of a deal with the prosecution, all the charges were dropped in exchange for a guilty plea for robbery. He was sentenced to 30 years, but was paroled after only 15. While in prison, Miller injured one of his legs, leaving him disabled and eligible for a disability pension from the state. Between the injury and his good behavior, the killer was paroled in April of 1993 after serving the minimum term for his crimes. After his release, Joseph moved into a Peoria nursing home. Fellow residents described him as a friendly guy who joined them for church services. He also roamed the streets, supposedly in search of work to supplement his unearned income. Those around him saw him as a harmless reformed convict, and in August of 1993, he was hired by 88-year-old Bernice Fagot to do some housework. Not long after she hired the killer, Bernice vanished. Her newspaper went uncollected, and neighbors had not seen or heard from her. As police began to investigate the disappearance, two bodies were discovered dumped in a drainage dish and a third was found in a ravine in Peoria. On September 18th of 1993, the bodies of 34-year-old Marsha Logue and 26-year-old Helen Durant were found. Marsha had been beaten and stabbed while Helen had been strangled to death. Eight days later, police discovered the body of 42-year-old Sandra Sesnegi. She had also been strangled. As with the first victims, the three women had a history of prostitution. Marsha Logue had last been seen in a maroon-colored car with a middle-aged man on September 15th. On September 23rd, Bernice's car was discovered abandoned in a parking lot near the nursing home where Miller lived. Due to his record of murder, police approached him and searched his home and vehicle. While Joseph Miller denied any involvement in the murders, evidence began to pile up. Investigators discovered a knife in Bernice's car with his fingerprints on it. He admitted that the knife was his, but not to her murder. Continuing their search, police found bloodstains and another knife in the car, and in his home they found a bloodstained mattress and woman's hair. He was also identified as the handyman who had been helping Bernice around the house by neighbors. 
friends of the killer came forward and said that he had been driving the Oldsmobile that belonged to her and he had told one that it was stolen and he wanted to get rid of it. DNA analysis determined that it was very likely that Miller had killed the three victims discovered in September and he was charged with their murder, but not the murder of Bernice as her body was never found. Attorneys for Joseph Miller were able to get a change of venue as they said that the publicity around the case would bias any jury against him. The trial was moved to Springfield, Illinois, and while he initially pled guilty to the three murders, Miller later changed his plea to not guilty by reason of insanity, claiming that he had a split personality disorder. A court psychiatrist did find that he had disassociative amnesia due to childhood abuse, but this diagnosis was not enough to sway the jury who found him guilty on all counts, sentencing him to death. He was sent to death row at the Menard Correctional Center in September of 1994. In 2002, the death sentence was abolished in Illinois, and Miller's sentence was commuted to life in prison. In 2004, Miller claimed responsibility for two additional murders in 1993, that of 18-year-old Valerie Sloan and 25-year-old Stacy Morrison. However, no bodies were found at the location he gave authorities as his dump site, and the claim was dismissed as an attempt to get attention. But he has not been officially ruled out, though the prime suspect is a man named Arlie Ray Davis. As of recording, Joseph Miller is incarcerated at the Dixon Correctional Center in Illinois.